CPR can help save a person's life if their heart stops. If performed immediately after a sudden cardiac arrest, CPR could more than double someone's chance of survival. I'm joined by Mike Smith from the American Heart Association to show us how to correctly administer hands-only CPR on an adult, child, and infant. Mike, if someone is having a sudden cardiac arrest, what is the first thing that you should do? Absolutely. So as I approach the patient, I want to make sure the scene is safe so that it's safe for me to enter. So I would come up and I would tap and shout, hey, hey, are you okay? Are you okay? Hands-only CPR, there's two basic steps. Call 911 and push hard and fast in the center of the chest. So I would have 911 started, and then I'm gonna start pushing right in the center of the chest, right in the middle of the breastbone, pushing down about two, at least two inches, and at a rate of 100 to 120 beats per minute. Think of the song, Staying Alive by the Bee Gees, and that would be the uh, song in your head to do this uh, compressions. Ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. Ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. And I'm gonna continue doing compressions until help gets there. So that's why it's so important to get 911 activated as soon as possible. Right, and again, there's no need for breathing. That's correct. At this point, uh, if you're unable or unwilling to breathe into a patient, something is better than nothing. So we would start compressions, move the oxygenated blood that's still in the body around, and then uh, help would be coming with a EMS, so. And outcomes from hands-only CPR have been shown to be just as good as CPR performance. Yes, and it's so important to get bystander CPR started before professional rescuers get there. You can actually double or triple the chance of survival. And quickly, if we were to perform breathing, yes, can you tell me a little about the ratio? That you Absolutely, have? so I would do 30 compressions and then two breaths. So I would do 30, two, 30, and two, and continue that um, until help gets there. Perfect. And next we have uh, a child mannequin. So if we were to see a child have a sudden cardiac arrest, sure. how would we approach doing CPR on a child? Well, the American Heart Association would recommend doing breaths and compressions on children and infants. A child is considered from one to puberty. So that's uh, underarm hair on male or breast development on female. And because that child would be uh, all shapes and sizes and we're all shapes and sizes, you have the option of doing one hand or two handed CPR but you still want to get down at least two inches at a rate of 100 to 120 beats per minute. And for any adult worried about injuring a child, or breaking ribs, is that something that should be in the mind of someone performing CPR? Yeah, I, I think a lot of folks are concerned about, oh, I don't want to hurt the child or anything like that, but it is so important to push down about two inches on the child. We're acting as the pump. We're pushing the oxygenated blood through the body. It's just imperative that we, uh, we do that. So yes, we want to push down at least two inches. And if we were to work in breathing, again, we don't have to, but if we were to, as recommended, what would the ratio be? Sure, so if I was working by myself as a one rescuer, I would be doing 30 compressions and two breaths, alternating compression breath. If I had a second rescuer with me, we would change that to 15 compressions in two breaths and then alternate as needed. Great. And then walk us through if we had an infant uh, sure. with a witnessed arrest. Sure, arrest, absolutely. So for infant, uh, we recommend, the American Heart Association recommends having the, uh, the infant on a table or a flat surface above the ground. It's a little bit easier to work. So, and because uh, we don't have to push down as hard, we would use two fingers going down about an inch and a half instead of two inches. And it's the same rate of 100 to 120 beats per minute. And working in breaths, what would the ratio be? Absolutely. So if I was by myself, or one rescuer, I would be doing 30 compressions and two breaths. If we were working together, again, we would change that ratio to 15 compressions, two breaths. Perfect. Change. So to summarize, hands-only CPR is two steps. First, call 911. And second, push hard and fast for adults with two hands in the center of the chest at 100 to 120 beats per minute to the tune of Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. And for children, use one or two hands in the center of the chest at 100 to 120 beats per minute. And for infants, the pressure isn't as hard. Use two fingers in the center at 100 to 120 beats per minute. Mike, there may be an instance where somebody has access to a defibrillator, and I know for a lot of Americans, they may have never seen a defibrillator or aren't sure about how to use it. Walk us through exactly what you would do if you had access to a defibrillator in the setting of someone having a cardiac arrest. Absolutely, and yes, they're all over the place. You can find them in grocery stores, airports, casinos, and that, and they're very simple to use. So for this model, the first thing you wanna do in any AED is power it on because the AED will actually talk to you and tell you exactly what to do. Apply pads. 
So for this one, it's telling me to place the pads directly on the patient. There's pictures also of where you would place the pads. So you peel these off and you would stick these exactly where they tell you. And the machine is not gonna move forward until this is done. So it's just gonna keep reminding you to do that. At that point, I would now plug the pads connector in. It's checking the patient. It's checking to see what rhythm the heart is in. So it walks you through everything. Absolutely. Shock advised. So now the machine is charging with energy mm -hmm. to deliver a shock. So at this point, we'd want everybody clear. So you may have to say clear. Deliver shock now. A shock is indicated. So we would say clear. We would shock the patient. Delivered. And then we would go right back into CPR again. 100 to 120 beats per minute, pushing down at least two inches on the adult. And we would do that, and in two minutes, the machine, the AED, is going to want to analyze again. And it'll tell you in two minutes Absolutely. Passed. It will say, hold, I want to check the patient again. And it's checking for the heart rhythm at that point to assess if it needs to shock. That is correct. So at this point, I would just continue with compressions. Perfect. Well, it's very self-explanatory. It's easy, and so people don't have to be afraid to use a defibrillator if they are able to use That's one. That's correct. Excellent. Thank Thanks. you so much. No problem.